Hey everyone, I guess it's time again for another one of my recent pickups videos. Um, I'm hoping to not really make this a monthly occurrence. It just happened to be this time around, I suppose. Um, I've gotten a lot of stuff in the last month, but I didn't really plan to. It all just kind of happened. Uh, I actually just got back from the store a few minutes ago. Uh, today is a Sunday, and what I got back from the store was prompted by this. Uh, this is this week's Best Buy ad. It just came out and I wanted to get a couple of things. I wanted to get one of these because I could use a Pro Controller for Mario Kart 8 and 30 bucks for one of these is a really good deal considering they're normally 50. And then my wife saw the 3DS buy one get one thing and she's like, oh I want Tomodachi Life. And so it's like, well all right, let's 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 take advantage of that deal. and. So that's, uh, that's what prompted uh, a quick run this morning to a few different stores. Um, ended up also prompting me to buy some other stuff. So I suppose let's start with the new. This is the new stuff that we got. I went to two different stores. My original intent was to have Target price match that Best Buy ad and do the whole thing. They, they were able to price match the Pro Controller and they only had two of these left. They were sold out of the black ones. And what's funny is I was at this particular Target yesterday and they had six total Pro Controllers, three of each color left on the shelf. And when I got there this morning, right when they opened, they just had two of these white ones left. So obviously people had seen the, uh, the Best Buy ad online, knew that it was coming and just started snatching them up with the intent of going back and having Target price match them today. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad I was able to get this for 30 bucks. I've wanted one of these. Uh, they, it works really, really well for Mario Kart if you don't want to do the motion, the tilt, you know, type of steering. Um, this is a lot more comfortable than just trying to use, a, a, you know, a, a Wiimote on its side or something. The Target had the games in stock, but they couldn't do the buy one, get one against Best Buy on the price batch. And they said the reason why is they could do the buy one, get one part of it, but they weren't able to complete it because Best Buy didn't put prices next to each of these games. Target doesn't know that Best Buy isn't marking them up, right? So Target had each one of these for anywhere between 35 and 40, but because Best Buy didn't list the prices, Target didn't know if Best Buy was maybe selling these for 60 bucks each. Uh, Target doesn't want to be giving a better deal necessarily than Best Buy is willing to do um, by matching the ad. So that, that's fair. So then I ended up going to Best Buy. Um, I got there right as they opened and we ended up getting Tomodachi Life, which my wife wanted, and Yoshi's New Island. Uh, I was kind of split between doing Yoshi's New Island and Zelda. They were out of Zelda, and this was the only Yoshi's New Island left on the shelf. The dude at Best Buy said, well, you could drive to this other store that's like, you know, 20 minutes away, and they've got a bunch of Zelda left on the shelf. And I sat and thought about it and I'm like, you know, I'm actually not that big of a Zelda fan and my wife isn't either. And Yoshi's New Island is a decent platformer. So both of these together were 40 bucks, like $42 with tax for two brand new sealed 3DS games. That's, that's hard to pass up. So let's get on to some other stuff that I picked up. I, uh, I also, while I was out, stopped by uh, Half Price Books and they had a 50% off sale going on. So if you had a coupon, you could get one item in the store. And what's interesting is they actually did it the most expensive item in the, in, you know, of anything you wanted to pick up. And I was there yesterday as we were doing errands and they had three PS2 Slims sitting on the shelf um, in, you know, in the case. And they were all in about similar condition. This one was the only one that had a stand. And it's probably the one that was also in the best, like, you know, cleanliness state. So I don't have to really do too much to, to clean it up. Um, I, I, I mean, I need, to, I need to clean it. But it's got the brick. It's got the AV cables. Two legit, you know, PS2 controllers. Um, in pretty decent shape, really. I mean, they're not... They're not horribly dirty or anything. This one's got a little scrape there. It's kind of a deep scratch, but whatever, I don't care. Um, these all just take apart, scrub down really, really good. Um, they'll, they'll be good as new. 
not too much wear on them. They're not ridiculously shiny. So, so that's nice. This one's got the stand. Now the other one's had a stand. Warranty sticker is still intact on the back. It's got a little wear, but whatever. Uh, the story goes, the very first PS2 we had, we bought back in college um, when I was just still going out with my wife before we got married. Uh, she blew her entire tax refund one year on you know, the first, the first edition, the original release of the PS2. And that's because Final Fantasy X had just come out. And we played the hell out of that thing. And eventually it got to the point where it was having trouble reading discs, which I guess is kind of a common thing for PS2s to do. And at the time, and this was a couple of years ago when it stopped reading discs, at the time I'm like, eh, whatever, I'll just get another PS2. I'll, I won't throw that one out. I mean, it has kind of sentimental value to us. I, I, I'll, I'll put it in a bin, I'll get another PS2, and we'll just keep playing that one. So a friend was selling his slim PS2 at the time, and I got it for 25 bucks, 30 bucks. I don't remember what it was. I didn't have any controllers for it, but I don't care. Uh, it was still in good shape. It plays great. And that's the one I've actually got in the entertainment center downstairs right now. But I wanted another one just because, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be kind of forward thinking in that I'm going to be playing video games for the rest of my life. And a lot of us, you know, of my generation, born in the 80s, grew up on video games. We are going to be playing these games for forever. And the hardware's not going to last forever. It's not like Sony in 20 years is going to come out with the PlayStation 8 or whatever they're on at that time and announce backward compatibility with all the previous consoles. I mean, history has shown that really backward compatibility is kind of a thing of the past. Nintendo is really the only one that does it with current gen consoles. That's just the way it is. So I don't want to say I'm hoarding hardware, but I'm going to keep a spare of the consoles that were really influential and the PS2 was really influential. So I've, I've got a spare here now. Yeah, so, oh, I forgot to mention, so that PS2 with the two controllers and the AV cables and power brick, original price that Half Price Books wanted was, they originally wanted 40 bucks for that guy, but today I had a 50% off coupon. <laughs> so yeah, $21.42 for a PS2 with a kind of a warranty. The only thing it really doesn't have that makes it fully complete is a memory card. But God, PS2 memory cards are so cheap. Two, three bucks and you've got a PS2 memory card. I mean, no, no joke. It's just whatever. I don't care that there's no memory card. So I mentioned that I was at Half Price Books yesterday and saw a bunch of PS2 Slims on the shelf. What I also found on the shelf was this guy. And I bought this guy yesterday because it ended up being a decent deal as well. It's another PS2. <laughs> it's, uh, it's got the manual and everything. I'm really surprised. And they never opened it. Like, this is still the factory sealed <laughs> paperwork that comes with the PS2. Uh, it's kind of humorous. It also came with two controllers. These are glossy. I mean, they're, they're, they've got some wear on them, but they're not dirty. I mean, they're not, they're not gross. They need to get cleaned, and I'm going to clean them anyway. I, I always clean used video game stuff just because you never know what kind of DNA is on it. Power cord, AV cable, no component. Nobody, none of them had component AV cables, but component AV cables, if you're willing to buy a third-party one, those are five bucks, and you get much, much better quality video out of those. And so, yeah, I mean, I ended up with, with uh, this guy. So I've got a fat, and my original thought was, you know, this could work really well as a parts machine for the one that we have that won't read discs and stuff. But I start looking at this one a little closer, and yeah, it's kind of grubby. I mean, there's the typical kind of dust in the fan, and down here in the front, I don't know if you can see, there's, you know, all the typical dust kind of caked in those vents, but it's in really good shape. The warranty sticker is still sealed. I mean, they, this thing's never been goofed with. And this is one of the first run because it's, if you look carefully, made in Japan. So this is really like, this one rolled down the same assembly line as the one that we have that's not working right. So yeah, I'm not gonna, 
I'm not going to use this as a parts one. I'm going to keep it too. So yeah, we've got we own four PS2s right now. Granted, only three of them work, but still. And uh, all right, so here's so here's the deal with this one. So half price books. The original price thirty bucks, but I had a thirty percent coupon, so I bought this one yesterday for. 20 something bucks, $21, whatever that ends up being. It was a good deal. I couldn't say no. And I've, I don't remember if I've mentioned this before, but I'm kind of making up for years of not playing video games quite so much. Um, you know, there were, there were probably the last six, seven years. I just really didn't play many video games and now I do. So I'm making up for that, I guess. But wait, as they say, there's more. Oh my God. I got kind of on a, a, a PlayStation Vita slash PSP kick and started looking online. And I've got a PSP 3000 and I've got my white PlayStation Vita. I've, throw, I've shown you guys that one before. One thing I've always wanted but never had, or at least one thing I was curious about but never had, was a PSP Go. Well, I found a guy, not on eBay, but online on a forum that I frequent who had one for sale and I got, I got him worked down to 50 bucks for it. Um, so you've got the USB cable and it came with the charger too. I just have it sitting in the bin. I didn't, I didn't bother pulling it out. Um, it came with the original PSP Go leather case. This is a decent case, like the get, the console snaps in and then you can slide it up and play it with it still in the case. I just don't like this kind of case because it makes the console kind of bulky. But it's it's real leather, I mean, I'm going to keep it. And then the actual PSP Go itself. I bought this sleeve off of eBay from China for like four bucks. Um, I mean, it's not legit. I mean, look at how poor quality that Sony logo is. But it's a nice neoprene sleeve, like I like. Um, I, I've talked to you about that before. I like these kind of neoprene sleeves. So I got that and then the uh, the Go itself. And it's in reasonably good condition. It does show some wear, um, particularly around the corners down here. Some of the paint's kind of scraped off just from normal use. So I'm not worried about that. There's a few small light scratches on the back. It's used, but it's not abused. And that's really all I care about. So that's that. Uh, it's a nice console. I really actually like, I hate to say it, but I like playing games on this better than on my full-size PSP just because you don't have to deal with UMDs. I like UMDs as a media because I was always a fan of Sony mini discs. I thought those were really cool and UMDs are really very much like mini discs in terms of their technology, but they're slow to load games. They are noisy this is a much more compact unit. It's nice to have a bunch of games already on here. You know, the storage built in so you don't have to keep swapping discs around. Um, it's got, you know, these came with 16 gig of storage built into them, which is already a pretty decent amount. The average game is about one gig. It's got the little door on the side so you can track down a, a Sony M2, you know, proprietary little media card, jam that in there. And I've seen 16 gig ones of those go for 20, 25 bucks used. Not bad. I'll probably get one at some point. Um, and then that's just additional storage. It's a decent console. I would have preferred a white one. And at some point I may try to track down a white one, but that said, I'm happy with the black one. I ended up paying 50 bucks for this guy with shipping, which again, I think is a decent deal because they average 70 to 80 bucks. In this kind of condition, you can get one that's a little more hacked up for 50, 60, but considering what it came with and that they had already put the custom firmware on there for me, it saves me that trouble. I think that's, I think that's worth the money. Last but not least, this is actually the oldest pickup um, from this month, or at least, at, least, at least since I've done the last pickups video. Uh, this also came from Half Price Books. The Game Boy Pocket. This is something that I'll probably be doing a few videos on, at least one video if not more, uh, because this one needs some work. It's grubby. It's really grubby. It's not in bad condition. I mean, it shows some wear. There's it's a little chewed up up there in the, the cartridge slot. 
has a little bit of wear on the paint. So it definitely needs to get cleaned up. Um, but it's also got a few minor electrical gremlins to it. If it was 20 something bucks, which, you know, 30 bucks is kind of the average for a Game Boy Pocket on eBay and half price books tends to kind of be about at eBay prices, maybe a little bit lower. But if it was, you know, the average price for a Game Boy Pocket, I wouldn't have done it. At least I wouldn't have kept this knowing it's got some problems. But 12 bucks, shoot, I mean, that's putting us into that GameCube kind of territory where it's like, if it's less than 20 bucks, I'm really kind of willing to take that risk. Knowing that even if I do have to throw parts at it, I'll at least break even in the end. So this is our new project kind of going forward. Just get this thing cleaned up, fixed up. I may be curious about putting a backlight kit in on this one, we'll see. But that said, here's our new project. Uh, everything else here works. It all works, <laughs> which is nice. I don't have a whole bunch of projects sitting in my hands here. I may, I may pass on that slim to somebody else. I'm not sure. But either way, a nice mix here of new and not quite new, but not ancient and a little bit older but still not ancient and then just plain old old school and all of this together i think i crunched the numbers and it's less than 200 bucks always keep your eyes open to sales and and the ads and try checking places that you otherwise wouldn't check i didn't half price books is almost my favorite used game store now just because they actually have this retro stuff and a lot of times because they're not really into video games a lot of times they'll price stuff not quite knowing what it's worth and they'll always be on the low end. Hey, you know, I'm not gonna, not gonna argue with that. But anyway, so here's the haul this time and we'll see if it, uh, we'll see if it continues at this pace. Hopefully not because I'm gonna run out of money if it does. Anyway, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. I do appreciate those. They help. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. It's right down there. And as always, thanks for watching.